Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to look at how Annie Are You OK, my beta weight undercutter performed at ARC's January meet. Now, before we kick off with some fights, there's two quick things I want to cover. First of all, uh, massive thank you to the builder of Antidoza. He uh, built this like full on trophy out of the front armor that Annie ripped off at last year's meet, uh, which is just very, very cool. Uh, yeah, the damage done to this thing is insane, and the fact that he's made it into a full little trophy is awesome. Uh, and I will be putting that up on the shelf up here and leaving it there for a long, long time. I really, really like that. Uh, second of all, Annie, uh, I didn't do anything to. Between the last meet and this meet, I literally charged the batteries a week, or sorry, three days out from the event. I charged the batteries and that was it. Oh, and stuck on a new face, but I did that when we were actually, actually at the event. So outside of that, nothing had been done. I hadn't pulled any apart, I hadn't done any maintenance, because uh, I was busy working on other things. And then also the holidays happened. So uh, yeah, Annie was going in a little bit beat up already, shall we say. Anyway, with that out of the way, uh, we'll move on into our first fight. And our first fight is up against Beta Griffin, uh, the robot that we had some amazing fights with at Robot Havoc 3. So I, I, I really like fighting Beta Griffin. They'd also done some upgrades. I was kind of looking forward to this fight and kind of not because it was definitely gonna be a good fight, but I wasn't sure if Annie was gonna make it out the other side. <laughs>
What a fight that one was. Now, uh, to be clear, that was a draw. The fight went the full three minutes and at ARC, in the round robin stages of competition, we don't have judges at all. So if you last the full three minutes, it's just a draw. Both robots get a one in their points tally and that's it. Uh, so that one was a draw and it was a very interesting learning experience. Uh, first of all, Annie got some serious air miles in that first hit. I believe she went about 40, 50 centimeters up off the ground, uh, which is quite impressive, especially for the fact that she landed and kept on going. That was awesome. Um, I like to see that a lot because uh, it means that she's fairly rigid and fairly uh, robust being able to do that type of thing. Especially considering, once again, there was no uh, spares or improvements or changes done to anything in her chassis uh, between now and, or between the last event and now. Uh, so while I was upside down, I did try and slam into him to get back over again. Uh, the second hit did not do that. Instead, I broke his weapon and I kind of believed that that meant that I was going to be upside down for the rest of the fight. But that I didn't really like because as it turns out, in Annie's current form, she does not drive well upside down. Uh, in fact, because of the way everything sits, uh, when you spin the weapon up while she's upside down, a massive gyro effect happens and her wheels leave the ground. They kind of tilt up like this. Uh, I think it's just because of the weight and placement of the blade. Uh, it just, yeah, causes the wheels to come off the ground and the whole thing to gyro like mad, which is not good. Uh, so the weapon has to go down quite low and even then she doesn't have any running surfaces really. So there's a couple of bolts up the top here which hold the lid in which I believe is what she runs on. That's not a good running surface so drive gets very difficult. Uh, thankfully I was able to slam into him once again uh, to actually do that and get back over and kind of gyro and slam around a bit and actually end up back on my wheels. And that's when I learned something else about Annie. And that is that her little side armor fins here aren't great for fighting verts. Uh, this armor was designed for fighting horizontals and I leave it on because I have the weight to. I can just afford to have this armor on at all times and I figured that having this armor on is better than not having it on. However, in this fight, it was very clear that when he pushed from the side, especially without his weapon on, he was actually catching on Annie's front armor, this lip that sticks out that kind of protects the wheels and used to protect the standoffs that ran up the front. Uh, he was catching on that and it was making me unable to spin Annie to face him and put the blade back into him where I wanted it. Uh, so that is actually a consideration that I now have to make. I have to think about this and I'm probably going to end up making a pair of front plates now. One front plate like this that has the angles and uh, the horizontal uh, defense capability and one that is squared off so that Annie has more chance of turning to face her opponents when I'm fighting kind of more pushy robots. Um, yeah, and the drive kind of started going uh, a little bit at the end there as well, uh, which wasn't great. I ended up having to like basically be able to only really drive backwards, uh, which wasn't great. I did end up uh, going in and fixing that motor up because it was just a case, the whole motor case and got a bit loose. So I had to put it all back together, get the wheel sorted for the next fight. Speaking of the next fight, we are up against a new vertical spinner called Hailstorm. These are some guys from Melbourne who I've fought before but haven't fought this particular beetle uh, before and have come over to South Australia because I finally can thanks to uh, Australia kind of doing pretty well on the whole COVID thing. Uh, so they've come over for some fights and brought a really nice pretty much all titanium I believe uh, vertical spinner. Three, two, one, go! Oh, 
Hey, so we got a win on that one. Uh, the drive was working better this fight. In fact, I would say it was almost working too well. For whatever reason, right at the start, I was quite twitchy turning left and right, which I don't know why that would have happened. I've set um, some upper bounds on my stick, so it sh she shouldn't be that kind of nimble turning left and right, but there you go. That was a thing that happened. Uh, the first hit obviously put us upside down again and once again Annie is just not set up for driving upside down right now. It's definitely something that I want to fix uh, potentially in the future but I'm not really sure if I'm going to do it or not because it's kind of a case of to fix that I would want to just redo Annie all over again. We'd go up to a brand new version of Annie and the only things I think that is going to stay is the full weapon stack up and the armor, because the armor is working really, really well, but the rest of the chassis design would just be completely brand new uh, to try and get the best of all of the different versions of Annie that have happened over the years. Uh, so anyway, ended up upside down, wasn't driving well because I was upside down. Uh, I turned the weapon all the way down to like a quarter, basically, to be able to actually even drive at all straight. I uh, managed to hit him a couple of different times and one of those knocked him up and got him into a nestle point where he could not get back down, which was cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, like I would have preferred to hit him up so that he could keep driving and we could have had a more, bit more of a fight and maybe got flipped back over and stuff, but yeah, getting the win is also quite nice. I will say though, we did a decent amount of damage in this fight. That first big hit that flipped us over tweaked most of the frame of Hailstorm. There's a nice big piece of damage right on that front corner. And then uh, Michael, who built the thing, uh, showed me some photos and like uh, showed it to me in a, uh, a video chat to show me that everything was kind of tweaked with his uh, uprights that hold his weapon in place. And that was all down to the base plate tweaking from the hit on that corner, which didn't even really hit the base plate. Uh, so yeah, I was quite happy with that. Annie, can be a terrifying uh, beastie when she wants to be, basically. So, uh, now we've got a draw and a win under our belt, it's time to talk about the very next fight. The very next fight is a robot called Bunyip. This uh, is a four-wheel drive beetle that we've fought before on this channel. We've had issues with them in the past with uh, taking their nice big soft rubber wheels off and having them jammed up in the weapon. Uh, however, Steve, who has built Vanyip, has been working to kind of combat that and has put some nice big guards around the outside of the wheels. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Oh. oh no. Oh. Alright. Hold on. 
So this was an odd fight. Uh, I mean, obviously we got the win, but there's a lot to talk about here as well. So uh, the weapons started squeaking uh, very early in that fight. I wasn't getting up to full speed really quickly. And that was basically because the weapon stack up that was in here, the pulleys and the bearings and everything had been the same ones that I'd used in uh, probably about a dozen fights at this point in time. Everything was just getting worn down. The belt was getting worn down. The teeth on the pulleys were getting worn down. The bearings were actually wearing their way into the pulleys. All of this stuff I found out after the fight, uh, but I did see and hear that in the early part of that fight. And uh, yeah, I, I knew something was up. So actually after this fight, between this fight and the next fight, I swapped the pulleys over to a fresh brand new pulley just to make sure that we could get the weapon up to speed better in the next fight. Anyway, so the weapon was eking out early and I knew that was gonna be a bit of an issue. Thankfully, it uh, survived most of the fight, uh, but Annie got rarer syndrome and she just chewed wheels like crazy in this fight. We ended up getting technically two wheels stuck in the weapon, but uh, it was two wheels stuck three times because we got the first wheel stuck, which got unstuck by him hitting me, which I was very happy about. He didn't have to hit me or keep hitting me. I, I might have cleared it on my own, but without that jolt of his drum, I don't think it would have come out. Uh, so that was very great. That was that was good stuff by Steve, like, you know, doing that hit to actually allow that tire to come back out again. Then we got the second hit where we got caught and tangled up in the wheel and that was an unstick condition because both robots couldn't go anywhere and he couldn't really back out because the weapon was so tangled up I couldn't actually drive it back out again. And he of course couldn't drive anywhere because there was a big old weapon stuck up in one of his wheels stopping everything from working. So that was an unstick condition. Uh, and then the final eating of a wheel was actually that same wheel that we got stuck into, but this time it actually came off. Uh, and of course it jammed up the weapon again. And I tried uh, to push it through the weapon, but what ended up happening is rather than being stuck here, it ended up being stuck up here, which was way worse for me. Uh, so I do need to work on that whole uh, weapon reversing system that I've been talking about a couple of times. And in fact, a newer version of Annie, I will move over to new uh, control electronics. So new transmitter and new receiver, which will allow me some more flexibility in programming. So I can do some stuff like that. I can do a reversing switch for the weapon. I can do a reversing switch for when Annie is upside down. So I don't have to think about how to drive her when she's upside down like that. Uh, and then of course, yeah, so we were stuck upside down with a wheel jammed in the weapon. I was working to try and get that wheel out. But then, like I said, by the time it got stuck back here, I was really in big, big trouble. And in actual fact, I started to get belt burn. The repeated use of this weapon pulley and bearings and uh, uh, weapon belt had all started to stack up and start to burn things out a little bit. And then when the weapon couldn't spin and I was trying to, I was getting full on weapon belt burn out of this, uh, which, not great, realistically, not not great. Uh, but like I said, thankfully I did have a spare pulley so I was able to put a spare pulley on. And that was good because that fight and that win puts us at two wins and a draw for our round robin bracket. And the way that ARC was run, uh, this meet was a little bit different to last meet. It was basically just a points system. So there were two round robin groups and the person with the most points out of their round robin was going to go home with the win and then second and third and so on from there. Uh, however, Iron Tooth had won its bracket completely like it had just won all of its fights. And then in our bracket, myself and Beta Griffin had won two and a draw each against each other, quite obviously. So. We were technically tied for second, third place, so the only way to fix that particular solution was to have another fight.
Ah, oh, I've... I love fighting Beta Griffin. It's such a fun robot to fight with Annie because the two are fairly well balanced at the moment. I mean, Annie has been kind of eking the upper hand out, but uh, her repeated damage kind of got to her a little bit in this fight. Um, so, obviously, first up, Annie got a bunch more air miles in this flight, which was kind of fun to see. Uh, however, one of the really big ones, Annie went up, hit the deck, and stopped. I had nothing. I couldn't get the weapon up, I couldn't drive, nothing was working for me at all. Very thankfully, uh, he didn't realize this, he came up, he slammed me in the front, pushed me over into the corner. When I hit the corner, the weapon kicked and started up again and I was or like okay from there basically. I had the weapon back, I had the drive back, on we went. Um, and then, you know, more air miles and more back and forth fighting. This one, this one was a good one. Uh, I will say though, that what happened towards the end there is I got hit and something that hasn't happened in a very, very long time happened and the silicon slid off Annie's wheels, basically slid inwards. Uh, so as the wheel was trying to travel around, the silicon was jamming up against uh, the side walls of Annie and that was putting a lot of uh, pressure and friction on the drive system to the point that I could basically really only drive backwards. And then of course, when I was driving backwards and turned in an incorrect fashion, turned when the silicon was right jammed up against Annie's walls, it just pop, popped a wheel off. And uh, he'd mm, frustrated by this. I mean, it is 100% my fault because uh, the way Annie's wheels are held on is with a hex hub and the hex hub just has two grub screws that sit onto the flat of a D shaft of the motor. Now, one of them gets a good bite, the other one doesn't and realistically, you should be taking them out and redoing your uh, Loctite on them and all of that kind of stuff like every event basically. Uh, I hadn't been had too much issue with them in this fight or in this event. So I was like, oh, they'll be fine. I'll be totally okay with all of that, but I should have known a lot better. Grub screws are a necessary evil. They are not a good solution for holding things to other things, but they're basically the best solution you've got in most cases. Uh, and I am very, very, very sick of hex hubs and hubs in general with grub screws as the grub screws being the only thing that hold the wheel onto the motor, which is the only thing that holds the wheel to the robot in general. I, I think if I do this upgrade I want to do to Annie, she's not going to have uh, hubs like this again. I'm going to do a different thing for the drive system, something that is a little bit more bulletproof. I might lose a bit of uh, drive power out of Annie, but I can't keep having fights where I lose based on grub screws because I just, I oftentimes I forget my grub screws. Uh, and I, yeah, it's it's a thing. I mean, and it's, it is totally on me, but I, I, I don't like grub screws, so I want to try and work to avoid those in the future. Now, the thing that was interesting to me though, was that after we lost the wheel and we were driving around on what was one wheel and the weapon, the weapon kept going, which is insane because we had two points of contact on the ground. We had the wheel and the weapon bolt as our two points of contact, which means that the third point of contact was the weapon itself as the weapon was spinning up. So the weapon was actually dragging on the ground, still spinning at a decent speed and managing to kind of keep everything going, which is how I kind of kept driving around for a little while because by changing the directions of the motor that I still had touching the ground and also by changing the speed of the weapon up and down, I was kind of able to like talk drive around a little bit. I mean, by this point I had also done a fairly significant amount of damage to him and he was also crab walking, admittedly crab walking better than me because his crab walk was being done on two wheels, uh, whereas mine was being done on one, which is kind of dodgy. I probably should have been counted out a couple of times, but I kept kind of just managing to move just enough and maybe being a bit threatening, uh, so I was kept in. And then uh, I had a problem where because uh, the weapon bolt is the thing that's running on the ground and it is quite low, I got caught in seams on 
the uh, the floor in the arena and that's what pushed me over towards the pit was trying to drag the weapon bolt up and over the seams and then basically it being far too late for me to change course before I actually did try and change course and then into the pit. Uh, so yeah, we lost that one, but it does mean that we actually came third for the event. So it's still not a, like a bad situation to be in at all, considering, like I said, that Annie was basically fresh out of her last fights with a brand new battery put in uh, for this set, and she has performed quite quite admirably. And there's, like I said, there's a few things through these fights that I have learned about Annie that is kind of making me want to actually go ahead and do the brand new version of Annie, which would be actually a significant upgrade, I believe. And also, maybe, maybe, just maybe, allow me to put more weight into the weapon, which would be insane. Because Annie already hits hard. She already hits really, really hard. But if I can put more weight into the weapon, she's gonna hit crazy hard, and I, I kinda wanna see that, to be perfectly honest. That could be a whole lot of fun. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this kind of fight recap of how Annie did at ARC. Uh, yeah, she, realistically, she wasn't actually supposed to be at ARC, but a few different things fell through for me over the Christmas break. Uh, and I didn't do some of the things I wanted to do, uh, which is why Annie got thrown in kind of last minute and kind of without repairs. Uh, so yeah, I didn't really do her justice in these fights, but she has come out of this quite, quite well for all of that, I think. Anyway, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.